Today, I'm gonna be showing you the auto steer system we've put on Johnny X. Yeah, you're right. Probably don't need it, but hey, I wanna show you how they work, at least fundamentally how they work, how they're installed, how you set them up, all that kind of stuff. Let's get started. Now we're not gonna do much driving today. We'll save most of this for another episode. But I do wanna show you just a little bit to show that it works. And then we'll start talking about the components. In the top center, you can see how far we off of the desired line. So that says point three nine inches. Point seven nine inches right on. And it shows you the speed. I'm going really slowly because otherwise it bounces so crazy that I can't hold the camera steady enough to see. Now you'll see that we set one guidance line. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then it's created all these other lines off to the side. As an example, I can pause it here. And then I can step over, keep watching up there. I can step over here to the next line. Okay, now it's selected the next line and I can continue. Okay, here we go. There we are, back on the next line over. The distance between those lines is easily configurable, and you should set it at your implement width, or just slightly less than your implement width, so you'll have some overlap. Okay, let's look at some of the components. Let's start with the steering wheel. It's a, a totally different steering wheel. It's got a motor and a gear inside it. You can see that it's kind of thick in this area, right? You see that the power cable goes in there and the control cable. So that replaces everything down to the main steering shaft itself. I attached this. I actually had to cut another slot in the rubber piece here. So I attached that to the steering column in there. That portion needs to be fixed attached to something that doesn't turn so that the rest of the steering wheel can can turn the actual I don't know steering shaft whatever it's called this is from FJ Dynamics this particular system and I believe they provided six or maybe it was eight different adapters to adapt between the spline on the main steering column and the steering wheel itself so this gave a lot of options uh, they actually asked me when I ordered it uh, how many splines, how many uh, you know teeth my spline had on it, and a, a couple other measurements. And then, sure enough, there was one in the box that fit perfectly on my steering wheel. Hardest part of this was getting the other steering wheel off. Yep. This is the main power switch right here. I don't suppose it really matters where it was mounted. I chose to mount it here. Uh, you leave it on all of the time. At first, I thought maybe it was the switch that, that turned on and off whether you wanted to auto steer um, at the moment. And no, it's not. It's power to the whole system. So I kind of misunderstood that when I mounted it. Um, you'll see some, some cables going under here. One of these goes directly to the battery. And one of them goes to the main power cable for the whole system. I'll talk more about that in a minute. I had a lot of debate with myself about where I wanted to mount the, the main monitor, the main, I'll call it the control unit, I guess. It would go in the cab of a larger tractor, that's kind of obvious, but I didn't know where to put it. I thought about trying to put it on top of the dash right in front of the steering wheel. I would have had to have created some bracket to have mounted on. I thought about trying to put it on the side uh, along the, the, the summit or maybe an additional bracket just like the summit bracket here and, and mount it here. But I did want to be able to watch it while I was going forward, and so I thought if I had it directly on the side of the tractor that I wouldn't like that very well. And I finally came up with this idea of putting my canopy on. 
and tying it directly to the canopy. So that's, that's what I've done, is it's attached to the roof of the canopy. This is called a ram mount, and this is a, an adapter that was partially included with the ram mount and partially I did it on my own. I got some bolts there. Those are some of my uh, heavy hitch bolt collection that I've told you about. You can get it at heavyhitch.com. Yeah, I really enjoy having those bolts. Uh, but, but with this ram mount, it actually had some more flexibility and I took some of it out because I decided I didn't need it. I just, just used the two ball mounts here and, and the one connector between them. Now you'll see that the system has a lot of cables. Yep. This was all centered around one major wiring harness and then off the, that wiring harness they had some other pieces. Like for instance, here's one that's not used and it's got a number two on it. So it's not used in, in, in mine, but the, the same concept is used on other ones. For instance, here's number eight that comes off of that main wiring harness and goes into what they refer to as the IMU. Now I had to look up IMU. I didn't know what that stood for. It stands for Inertial Measurement Unit. Now I believe what this is for is momentary lapses in GPS signal or RTK signal. This has kind of a gyro in it that allows it to, to know its heading, to know its angle. And yeah, it's not going to be perfect. It, it will accumulate error over time, but if you have just a few moments where you're, say, behind or under a tree and your GPS signal is out, uh, your tractor can do pretty good about trying to stay straight. And then when you pick up signal again, it'll correct itself and, and move on. This also shows the angle of the tractor, the, the angle this way, the pitch this way. And that helps us to know, because the antennas, see, are up on top of the tractor, but that may not be where we want to, to drive straight, right? We may want the, the implement of the tractor to remain consistent with the prior pass, no matter where the tilt of the tractor is. So it's, it's a very complex mathematical problem that they have to solve here with the auto steer unit. The IMU, Inertial Measurement Unit, takes care of part of this, at least when the signal is not as strong as it ought to be. Let's look at the other main sensor on the tractor. Now this is just a piece of steel that, that I bent to be appropriate. This is an angle sensor right here. This angle sensor keeps track of the angle of the front wheels. There's no calibration to it, you just put it on and it'll figure it out over time, I guess. And it's supposed to be mounted exactly on the hinge point of the front wheels. Well, I didn't have any bolts there. I've seen some other installs where people have been able to put this bracket right onto some existing bolts. Just take the bolt out, put the bracket right on there. I didn't have that. So I came up with this technique. I'm, I'm not that thrilled with this. I wouldn't be able to be too rough on it. I've, I've actually hooked it to the tie rod there. It's not the best idea, but hey, uh, for, for what I'm doing with it, it'll probably be fine. Yep, this is just for fun anyway, right? So that main wiring harness goes all the way from the control unit, all the way down through the tractor, under the tractor in my case, up to the steering. And it has, uh, you might say, uh, connections that, that Y off of it or T off of it at several different places. Each of them are numbered. So here's an example up here. Here's number six and uh, number four. This made the installation incredibly straightforward. I, I started to say simple. It's not simple because I'm running a lot of wires across a lot of the tractor. Let me show you an example. I had to run a power cable up over the top. Now typically I wouldn't do that. Typically I would run a power cable uh, somewhere in on that side of the tractor over there and, and just follow the rest of the power cables. But this one wasn't long enough. It's not the power cable that wasn't long enough. It was where the power cable meets up with some of the rest. And I thought to myself, I was trying to figure out why, why it didn't fit properly, and then it came to me. It was because my uh, tractor is so much different than most. With the cab, you just wouldn't have had some of these issues. You would have positioned some of these sensors and some of this equipment totally differently. Uh, for example, the control unit wouldn't have had to have run all the way to the rear of the tractor and back 
it would have come through the front of the tractor and then right up into the cab somewhere, which would have been a you know, much more straightforward approach. I could have achieved that perhaps if I'd have tried to put the control unit right in here, which was one of the options that I did consider. But I'm pretty happy with uh, where I've settled to have it. The only disadvantage so far I see is that this canopy bounces a lot, and so that, that bouncing is, is kind of exaggerated with the heavier control panel hanging there. You might have noticed this in the background. This is what they call the mobile base station. This gives us RTK, yeah, another acronym. What is RTK? It means real-time correction, if you're Russian. No, it means real-time kinematic correction, RTK. Um, that's way too complicated for me, so what I refer to it as the way to get down to centimeter or half an inch accuracy. And that's what we're seeing with this thing. We're seeing the kind of accuracy that, that one would need to mow uh, or to use a sprayer or you know a, a lot of things you need more accuracy. I tried it without this base station with WAAS, W-A-A-S, and that's a less accurate correction mechanism. And I didn't find that sufficient to mow. Uh, I, it, it, it just would, would wobble all over a little bit. It just was not sufficient, I didn't think, to be able to run the mower. This unit right here with the tripod, with the uh, complete satellite receiver and radio transmitter to be able to transmit to the tractor is uh, $19.99. Uh, there are no license fees with this particular uh, unit. Well, there's one. There is a feature called U-Turn, which will uh, allow you to get to the end of your pass and it will turn the tractor automatically. The Auto Steer product itself is priced at $6,800 online when you use coupon code TTWT. I think you can get this through dealers as well, I'm not sure, but online through the fjdynamics.com website. And that includes everything you need for the auto steer, the steering wheel, the two sensors, the control unit, which is pretty good, by the way, in, in bright, sunny conditions like we're in today. Although I did find me a shady spot under the canopy for this particular uh, shot. <laughs> it's kind of hot. The mobile base station is an additional $2,000. Do you need the mobile base station? Well, you do for better correction. So, if you want that RTK correction, the mobile base station may be required. Now, in Indiana here, we actually have a free public RTK system in the, you know, in, in the region here. And they have a bunch of RTK transmitters that are controlled and managed by the state. That was what I expected to use. Unfortunately, when we tried it, my system didn't turn out to be close enough. My, my property isn't close enough to either or any of the, the nearest RTK transmitters in the area. So it didn't work for me. Uh, but if you do have that opportunity, uh, it's called IN Cores, and I know that several other states have it. Uh, that's, a, that's a very nice uh, state-sponsored feature that really helps farmers and landscapers, whoever might want to use this type of technology to get that sub-inch or down to the centimeter level accuracy. If you don't have access to that, you will need the mobile base station. Mobile base station has a radio transmitter on it. You configure specifically for your auto steer system to talk to the mobile base station, and then you can get that level of RTK accuracy no matter where you are. You just take your base station with you, set it up. It's easy to set up. I've had a little bit of an issue connecting to it um, and, and getting the RTK to actually work. But I think it's because I don't understand yet. And you know how it is with any technology. It's just got some idiosyncrasies that, that you don't, you know, get to understand immediately. So it seems like I have a little difficulty setting it up and then boom, it's connected. So there's probably some order or, or something that I'm not uh, getting perfectly to get it uh, connected the first try. Overall, the system has been fairly easy to deal with. You have to do several measurements of where your antennas are compared to your rear wheels, the overall wheelbase of your tractor, um, the length of your tractor, the height of your antennas, the distance from your hitch of your tractor to the rear of the implement, the width of the implement. So a bunch of different measurements that you need and you enter these into the settings on the control panel itself. 
Once you've got them all entered and you've got your base station or your RTK set up, you need to drive the tractor a little bit, and that gives it time to do some of its internal calibration. For instance, figuring out where it is on that angle sensor on the front wheel. So uh, just driving it around, it will get better and better for the first few minutes. It's, it's kind of fascinating. I have no idea what it's doing, but it's, it's doing some calibration internally. I'd say for me, the hardest aspect was getting the correction uh, working. So let's back up on that correction a little bit. What, is, what do we mean? Well, the GPS signal uh, that comes from all the satellites is not accurate enough to do what we would typically want to do you know, on the farm or in a landscaping business where we need a, or want at least a very uh, accurate setting. You'll notice if you, if you live in a farming area, you'll notice now that the planter rows are straight as a string. Well, that's because they have this, this extra accuracy. And it requires an additional point of reference. That's what the base station serves, is that additional point of reference. And with that, compared to what the GPS is telling you and some mathematical magic, they're able to work out exactly where you are to within a centimeter. And I believe that is north, south, east, and west, as well as vertical. So that, that accuracy is pretty amazing. You just need that base station within, I don't know, whatever the radio distance is. They say, I believe up to, it's either three or 10 kilometers, you know. Uh, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it up where I am uh, for the given project if I, if I wanna use the auto steer. And uh, yeah, as long as I'm, you know, within a mile or so, I should be fine. I've come inside now because I just didn't think we were going to be able to see this screen out in the bright sun. And one of the side effects of that is that we will not have any GPS signal. That's what that flashing message there says. No GPS signal at all. This is the main menu here. Uh, we've got uh, two or three things here that are interesting. The, the settings, that's where you configure everything. The first thing I had to set up was the vehicle information. And that's what we'll see here. Again, sorry about the reflection that you might see. There's front wheel track, front to rear wheel base, distance from, see, and so each one of them, it gives you a visual of what it really wants to try to measure. It was not that difficult to do any of these measurements. All right, I had to test the turning radius, and it, again, it showed me how to measure it. I had to tell it how the steering wheels, was it front, was it, back or was it four wheel steer, right? So configuring all this up front took some time, but it wasn't that difficult. Now, we can have more than one implement. <clears throat> we can have a list of implements, but I've put one in so far. Well, I've put two, but I've really only configured one very well, and that's my Woods TBW1220 uh, flex wing mower, bat wing mower. And um, I've said that it's a tow behind implement. I can say edit here, uh, that it's a tow behind, that it use, it's used for tilling. I didn't know what to say for that. It probably doesn't really matter. Tilling, seeding, um, spraying, planting, whatever. So I just left it at tilling. Um, and it's towed, it's not a three point. Uh, and I put the brand name in, model number, Right? And then I put some configuration. How far do you want it to? I did, had to do these measurements again. And the guidance line, I wanted to be 11.4 because the working width is 12 foot and I wanted to be able to have a little bit of overlap just for confidence, right? No offset, it's centered. Um, so there we go. That's how you set up the implements. At this point, we have the tractor set up, we have the implements set up, but we don't really have a, a way to create a guidance plan for it. A, and so for this, we have to, to click the task button. And the first thing you have to do is create a field, right? I've created something I call my yard, and I don't even have a boundary selected on it. But there's my yard. And then I created a task called mow, okay? I don't have any boundary on it, as I said, but you can kind of see my house there in my driveway, okay? I did put an outside boundary on it uh, of the mowing area, so I guess I can, I can put that and choose that. 
Now, this is where you set up a guidance line. That's not where I am. I'm actually in this little gray box here. But if I want to create a guidance line, you create plus sign here. And you tell it to create a point, right? And it can either be a point on a curve or a point on a straight line, or a pivot even. If I say straight line, I mark where point A is, and then I drive for you know roughly to the other end of that, and then I'll, it'll say mark where point B is, and then it will create those lines. I'm not quite sure why my guidance lines are gone that I showed you outside and that we were using. Eh, I'll have to figure that out as we go. And that's about the extent of it. You've seen all the setup right there. Uh, to be able to set up a, a straight line. What I think I'll do for mowing is I'll set up one line that isn't an angle and I'll set up another line that is straight and then I can just use either one of them uh, to make sure that I'm, I, I am mowing straight. Now, I hope you notice that I've, I've configured all this to try to use that uh, Woods TBW 12 foot turf batwing mower on Johnny X. And that's going to be an upcoming episode so we, don't, we haven't tried it yet I don't know if it'll work. Uh, some of the issues that I might have with a, a, the big Rhino Ag flex wing, I'm not going to have with this one. For instance, the heavy tongue, right? The, the tongue weight on that Rhino, the way it's made, is about 1,000 pounds. Well, this one, the deck's actually set on the ground at all times when they're mowing, so there's not going to be much tongue weight at that point. Um, the other thing is the PTO shaft itself, it's a much narrower diameter uh, CV joint. So I think, I think it has a better chance of working. But we'll get to that in a later episode. So while a lot of you guys with 1025Rs are not really interested in a system like this, I get it. I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of money and it's not necessarily that much value add for you. Maybe it would be interesting to you to hear a little bit about where it does fit into the agricultural market. There's um, been a, a two or three main players in the uh, GPS, auto steer, basically big technology and, and guidance portion of agriculture. And that's Topcon and Deer with its Green Star system. There's Ag Leader uh, with a slightly lower price system, I believe. Case uses a Trimble system, I believe. I'm not certain of that. But these are expensive systems, right? I mean, they, they are in the neighborhood, someone can correct me if they know better, but twenty to $30,000 with a lot of repeat licensing uh, to be able to get all the functionality that you need for auto steer and controlling your implement. So what these new players are doing is providing some lower cost alternatives. With this one not having much additional license cost, the only thing I can see is the U-turn functionality, which assists you turning at the end. And I believe that is like $479 at, at, at the recording of this video. And I don't think it's a license. I think it's a, a one-time upgrade. So this system pretty well covers that base auto steering functionality for a lot less money. There's a two or three uh, companies doing this and uh, one of the other ones I looked at seemed to have more annual licensing, uh, more focus on uh, repetitive re revenue for them, in other words repetitive spending for you the customer. So I, I kind of like the one-time spend approach, you've probably learned that about me. And uh, so if, if, if I were interested in adding auto steer to an older tractor, um, and this could be anything from you know, the old Oliver that I would, I would love to have here on the property. Um, you know, anything. Now, I would say it does need to have power steering. Uh, a manual steer tractor, I don't think that little mo motor is going to have enough uh, power to handle a manual steering tractor. But if it's got power steering, there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to get uh, this system to run. The other thing it would need would be a 12-volt system. So anything that uses 6 volts uh, or, or other probably wouldn't work. But that's where this fits. It probably doesn't have as much feature set or as, as tightly integrated with your tractor, say, as the Green Star system. But it's a lot less money and it's available for these older tractors or smaller tractors like this that don't have the support. Next episode, we're going to get into actually using it. 
we'll actually mow our yard with it. Uh, we've had a little bit of rain and so our yard's beginning to turn green. Uh, hopefully pretty soon we'll be able to get this tractor out and try that 12 foot bat wing on it. I'm excited about that. Maybe I can just uh, sit back and drink my Diet Pepsi uh, while it's steering. Now you can find out more info about this particular system at fjdynamics.com. Uh, they, they lay it out pretty good what features and support that it has. Overall, this is a pretty self-contained, pretty easily installed system. So, uh, it, you know, it's, it's worth a look, it's worth your time, and, and I hope we've been able to help you understand a little bit about how the auto steer technology works. Obviously, we're not gonna get into the math we're not going to get into that level of detail, but uh, I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. Now I had to look up IMU. And I forgot again. It stands for inertial, it stands for inertial, it stands for inertial measurement. It stands for inertial measurement unit.